Hey, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. It's been a while since I have really just been engaged into making this project alive itself. And today is the time where you get to see like how did I actually made this project? Why, did, why even I created this project and what was my thought process? How did I approach it? And what are the technical difficulties, challenges? We'll discuss today everything about it. Now, a bit fair of warning, this, uh, I would say this I would video is not about like me doing like all of the coding scenario, all the coding stuff, because that will take too longer time. Rather, this video is meant or this video is more focused on to give you a intuition about how to really go on, have an idea and build the things so that it can really help you in your own development process or development journey as right there. So I would always say that if you want to check the like source code and all of that, I would put the link of the GitHub repo in the description so you can check that out. With that said, first of all, let's come to the uh, browser and let's see the demo up right here before really moving up to all other kind of things. So let's come to right there. So first of all, as you can see, this demo is on experientia.in. I will tell you what is experientia and all of this stuff just in a few moments. First of all, we'll see the demo. As you can see, it's there's a satellite loading screen. I'll, I'll tell you like how did I approach it and all, what was the thought process behind it. This is a loading screen, this is an intro screen. And I'll tell you what this beta release actually means because there's a lot of technical uh, issues that I really faced during this, uh, during making this stuff right there. So if you just kind of go right here, this is the first is Afghanistan. This is second, okay, this is Iceland. Let me just, okay, what did happen? I think there's some issue with screen recording. This, it might happen So right? Let me just refresh it. So if I just do it down right there, go to the Iceland. Now, just because the uh, screen recording is on, you might see this animation quite a bit, a little bit stuttering. But otherwise, if you try it out, I'll just give all the demo link in the description. If you just open it in your desktop or your laptop, it will run, it will pretty much run smoothly, I would say. Oh uh, yeah, and plus there's also trip. There's also let's say. This is additional map on top of the base, uh, like I would say globe right there. What you can do is you can just continuously go on and zoom right here. And, and just like Google Maps, it also really dynamically loads all the tiles, especially right here. So how to really create it? Where is the data that I've fetched from? We'll exactly see up right there. So right now, it's just I'm just trying to give you a brief overview as we go along i'll just give you the basic analysis and uh what to really say like deep dive i would say like intuition wise how how can you make it what are the steps it's really right there anyways first of all let's come to you know the india where i have really made the previous trailer there's this is really like here so as you can see this is the here is the pune my hometown here is the Mumbai, which is the most probably the financial capital of India. And again, uh, as you can see in the night, it really looks like this. Now, this is pretty much a 2016 version of right here. If I just dim this, everything is gone. As you can see, there's a blurish background, which kind of really reflects up right here. If you just come right here. So this is the base background that I've blurred so that uh, you can focus on the right elements. So Again, if you want to compare it with like, you know, 2020 well version, so as you can see, you can just increase the opacity of light here. So basically this 2016 is the base layer. This is the mid layer and this is the top layer. So each like each of them are like on st stacking on top of one another. So that's how it's been really working up right here. Again, if you just kind of see right here, okay, let's say this is the 50% approximately. And now you can just try to compare it, right? As you can see, there's a massive difference between like just in four years, like 10 to 20 crore people in India have got access to electricity or, you know, have expanded their properties or whatever that might be case. So again, uh, you know, I just want to show you that right here. This is the railway map. And I I'll, I'll, I'll just highlight all of this aspect about why are you seeing what are you seeing right here? So this gives an info about what it is. So again, let's come down. This is the Russia, the biggest country on the earth. It's like, you know, uh, yeah, 
This is Australia. No. Yeah. US. Egypt. Our neighboring country, Pakistan. So as you can see, the most of the habitants in Pakistan are river are, are close to the river Indus because like you know most of the like water has been originated from himalayas which is carried by the river indus itself so most of the pakistan live around this river up right here so as you can see this is why like you know even my cursor is right here like there are not many population around where my cursor is moving so most of them are really pretty habituated near along the indus river up right there again this is what my country looks like in 2016 it's like in 2012, 2016, 2012, a big difference. Like, you know, and I would say India is the brightest country anywhere in the night just because due to our sheer population and where we are really, and sorry, and how we are distributed along our country itself. So as you can see, this is 2016. This is big brightness. So it's like, yeah, yeah, this is like hundreds of million. I mean, that's 10 to 20 crore people have got access. If you want, you can see the micro trends it shows you the access about like how india has gone through all of it right here you can also try to just let's say 2012 to 2016 so as you can see uh it was like 80 percent of the people were having access to electricity and then now it was like more than 90 percent which is i would say it's good like you know and coming to now 2023 is the latest one is like you know up to 99 percent so there are still few people who are living without electricity and i would say uh, the one percent of the people that these are people that are living that they don't have access to electricity they might be the one who are living in the far fetch like you know himalayas and like the outskirts where the logistics is a very like i would say a really really tremendous challenge but i hope like government really does something about it it's like yeah uh this is china again as you can see right here, uh, if you just, see, just focused on this area where my cursor is moving, as you can see, the lights have been more dimmer right here because most of the Chinese have been moved from like from rural areas to urban areas for the search of jobs and better because like, you know, with the Western areas, like it's probably Shenzhen and all that, most of the manufacturing and electronic component manufacturing is always situated in the east side right there. So it's like this is Shenzhen, there's like this is my curse, is like in the south China, this is like Taiwan, especially right here. It's like yeah, uh this is Africa, this is Korea, the land of BTS, K-pop, group, K-pop drama. It's like you can pretty much know about what it is. But like on a serious note, uh here's where you can see the startling difference between the democratic South Korea versus like authoritarian uh north korean regime it's especially right here and i also really tried to just mention right here why there is so much light here as compared to north korea i mean sadly like you know people in north korea because of the dictatorship they are living the past itself but actually this is not a geopolitics video this is a, like technical deep right, down video right here and i should focus on this topic it's right here coming back to the point again this is yemen 2016 2012 as you can see there's a big difference right here uh, just right here in the west side up right here is just my cursor is moving uh, as you can see in 2012 there were more lights and as you can see the middle east area is always prone to like civil war conflicts and all the stuff so that's what i've tried to really highlight here like you know or at least nasa's black marble data tries to highlight here again if you come to right here similar is the case for syria as you can see there's not much light here you know if you can see this black area there's nothing much but if you go to the 2012 version big difference as you can see there's a lot of lights here so there's a big starting difference about here it's just like here and this is pretty much the inspiration of this video that i've got right here uh if i try to open this again it's like i'll just not show it okay uh this is pretty much 26 video where he covers a lot of stuff about uh, about this nasa black marble and there are also some of the details which my site doesn't really covers because of the technical limitations where i have the only constraint where i can just only go to fewer locations right there 
But this video is genuinely good. I highly suggest you to go it right here. I also try to tell you, I'll also try to tell in upcoming slide that how I got this inspiration about right here. Again, a special like to thank these folks, Paul Henschel, the founder of or the maintainers of Poem Andrus Group, which a which is what uh, which is which created the React 3 fiber. And these are the links that I have highlighted. You can check that out. Again, Don McCurdy, Bruno Simmons for his like three years course, Mike on Stack uh, GIS, Devdat uh, Devdat Tengshe and Chinmay Shaligram from like uh, GeoSpark Pune, which is a subsidiary of Ola. I like to thank them. And obviously my friend Vinak Tube, it's like he was so patient. Like, you know, I, I just tell him like, hey, test this, give me feedback. And the moment he just tested it, you know. Uh, so I really thanks for him for watching. Hey, Tube, thanks. I mean, uh, thanks for your patience with staying with me and continuously giving the feedback up right here. Uh, again, uh, this is really like if you have any suggestion, you can try to do it. So now it's time to just kind of go through the slide, I would say. So now it's time to just go through some of the slides up right here. So as you can see, my first project is what I would like to call it as NASA's Black Marble in 3GS. Or the subtext would be somewhat like, you know, an attempt to emulate Google Earth. A little bit about myself, I am assuming not everyone would be subscribed to this channel and a lot of new people are, will be coming now and in the future as well. Uh, I'm a self-taught developer, self-taught developer in the sense I don't have any formal education, don't have formal education in the sense I'm currently 23 right now. Uh, I just, I really dropped out of my college because I didn't enjoy it. So from like 2019, 2020 and 2021, I spent a lot of time self-educating myself about coding in JavaScript full stack, serverless. I have a lot of interest in like filmmaking, uh, documentaries, human nature, engineering. Engineering is my favorite stuff. Like I would, I would do any, I would do any day engineering right there. Uh, so basically, like you know, I have interest in all sort of diverse thing up right there. And this project is basically like my an attempt to bring all of my interest at one place. So as I'll go along with it, you will just try to see how exactly that tries to fit in that project. So and how stuff works in general, like you know, basically like. Uh, everything I just want to know everything about how the world really works. So there's always a pros and cons because actually I'm I really want to know everything, but that kind of makes me overwhelmed sometimes. So you have to just narrow down the path. But anyways, coming back to the point, uh, we'll really focus again. I'm just diverting a little bit. Anyways, uh, this is my YouTube channel where I try to make a lot of you know I would say videos. I, earlier my focus was on like you know coding. But now I've more diverted on something like uh, documentary style stuff. Like my most favorite one, which I've really made is uh, it's like this UPI thing. Like how this how UPI changed? Why did we created UPI despite we had NEFT, IMPS, RTJs, and all the stuff? And like how it has really strengthened our own Indian economy? Uh, I would highly recommend you to watch that after just have, after you have finished this video, so that will give you an understanding about like how Indian is like how uh india is protected from like you know swift cut out especially like that because we have our own payment network we don't need to depend on any other country to like, facilitate transactions so it also really highlights the you know the progress about from neft what was the thing what was the thought process and why did we even create a upi what's the like uh i would say the outcome of it so again uh this is also my one of my course called dynamo db which I really created because, you know, when I was learning Lambda, DynamoDB and so this AWS serverless, I was kind of frustrated, like, you know, documentation of AWS is not good. I mean, there are not many resources. So I thought, hey, just create it out for the, uh, just create it out. Hopefully any, anyone could get benefited out of this course. So if you're really interested, links are always in the description. Do check it out. And now what we are going to talk about is Experientia. So Experientia is basically the name which I've decided to give for my startup, right? Uh, from since start, like it's pretty much about like, you know, since childhood, I have been inclined to space uh, research like Cosmos, uh, like from Nat Geo, into the wormhole by Morgan Freeman, Curiosity by Discoveries. I've been like enamored basically by all the science fiction shows. So growing up, I always wanted to do something about space uh so like you know this is pretty much what my startup experience will be focused on right there now this name is under like trademark 
approval process so based on the result of it this name may or may not be finalized for the like end future version so if you're watching for this future if, if the name is still around you will be rest assured that uh, all the links will be updated in the description but anyways coming back to the point about the experience is basically trying to bridge the gap between like you know nothingness to absolute like astrophysics deep master what that essentially means is that let's say if you want to learn about black holes universe expansion rate like how to observe stars how to do the analysis on the stuff on youtube you will get a superficial value or let's say demo up right there but they are just for like entertainment they don't have any deeper value and even if they do it's like almost over the head and most of the like uh, in-depth value or in-depth the juicy material what i would like to call it is in the normal normal people's language are always in the research paper the problem is research paper are for those who are already into that field for like for past five ten years so the question is how do we really bridge the gap together and that's what experientia or my future plan for this project is about so basically we will come along and create a platform where you can try to self-educate yourself about various astronomy physics about all the stuff and we'll give you provide tools data access to do all sort of observations analysis and do all kind of thing up right there so basically level step is to get these stories that are various like amazing stories in the field of science one of the thing that i really mostly focused is on let's say during the world war only britain and us know how to make a metal how to make a better light bulbs and Germans be like, you know, we do want to make a better light bulbs than you. Hey, Britain or hey, US. So during the process about, you know, dissecting and figuring out how to make a light, better light bulb, they discovered black body radiation, which is what a precursor to quantum physics is. And you know how it revolutionized all the tech stack. It's like that. It doesn't only just goes into like quantum physics. It also goes to into like something like, you know, fiber optic cable, fiber optic internet and all the stuff rough right there so the base i, I think uh, and the second story which i like to just highlight is about you know paxos algorithm that's been used in a distributed system now communicating across thousands of computers is always a challenging task because you have to kind of keep the task about or you have to keep this or you have to synchronize the task about when the message is coming from which servers and what the time and that's always a very like challenging task itself so to really manage and synchronize time Paxos algorithm is used in a distributed system like Docker, Kubernetes, or any other distributed system that ever lives on this server world or like, you know, any computer's tech stack, it's right there. So basically, like that time synchronization actually uses the principle from Einstein's general relativity. So it's, it's very fascinating to think about, you know, Einstein just predicted out of its own real, out of his own mental reality that, hey, like general relativity exists and now we are using it sort of like you know in computer science so there are various stories we want to get it out we want to just focus on it increase the subscriber base increase the financial base then create a top of then on top of it create in-depth material courses which which more like only one or two person maybe people who might be interested in it to pursue it and then again we want to create on top of it like tools software stack to just kind of get all the it's basically to really help people to do all sort of analysis over it because what i'm really assuming is uh most of the like you know data science data engineer they are they, there might be other people who are genuinely interested in space but they just don't know like how to do it effectively and earn money because the i would say the like learning curve in the physics is just huge like you know you have to wait for like five ten years to just kind of go into that area so how can we just reduce that learning curve and to just get started immediately just like coding you know a smart guy has already built a compiler and we just work on abstraction layer so how can we get all the people together and just kind of introduce an open source culture just right into space up right here so that's the basic idea to just get the base add more in-depth uh, learning materials add give them the tools give them the access to all the database give them the knowledge how to do the analysis and create overall a ecosystem on top of it so that could really accelerate the uh i would say research base research material that they could really be financially be viable also to how to make money and all this stuff because i would i have seen the trend because a lot of private trees private companies are also doing their own research they need a good talented folks to do that 
so my kind of aim with this experience thing is you should not be tied to only universities even if you have a normal like 10 pass 12 pass degree you should be able to do like cutting edge research so if you have an idea take our platform learn through it and then you can try to just kind of make your own research paper out of it that's the whole idea right there now i do acknowledge that come like you know compressing or like two or three hundred years of archive on a single platform it's an incredible challenging task like you know and probably i don't think we could ever be near close to 100 percent in trying to bridging that gap together itself and i would say this is like almost 10 15 years of journey it's like you know but we'll prioritize on what's more important like you know rather it's like sort of like 80 20 principle uh, rather than trying to just bring everything on one platform together right there so it's about optimization which we'll just do as uh, what what suits best to what suits us best and what people will demand in the future so that's what experience basically is so i hope that you have got the basic gist about what this is and this project is basically like a level zero about let's say uh level zero execution from my side like hey this is what i've done this is the ultimate vision that we go up right here here we have to go right here and this is basically like you know just like everyone else i'm too really blinded by my own ignorance i need more greater talent i need to work with greater minds you know to really just uh you know just kind of increase the productivity up right here so and just and business just happened to really like you know and i really like and i really love the capitalism so just like a healthy capitalism not the crony or like you know uh like over obsessive capitalism that could damage that is what damaging our earth itself so but anyways coming back to the point uh i really that's just pretty much what we have to do so this project is basically like from my side like hey here's the first project we want to go we want to go like 100x above that or let's say thousand x above that and this is from my side like you know i want to attract great talent and great uh, great uh, developers in future so this is just from my side like here and as you can and as you already know that uh for any companies attracting great minds is always a challenge so hopefully this serves a two purpose like for normal audience they might really know how the i would say how the earth looks at the night and for developers to really just get excited like hey this is the project i really want to work on something like that so the next uh, thing to really talk about is here's the thing that i really want to focus on is about on 2019 this is the first 3js project that i really saw about right here so and i was immediately blown away by it. this is like you know a real time demo about how the cassini has been flown away from the earth how did it crash what was his journey and all this stuff right and to give you about just a uh, a fair bit of warning this is not a video this is a real time rendering in this what 3js is doing right here and this just blew my mind in 2019 but there was not any learning resource or learning material so i just kept it aside for a while and then i thought like hey in future some if someone might create the course or someone might create some like you know simplified tutorial i will just learn it and i'll just do this thing so again this is the first demo if you want to see this i have the second one up right here as you can see this is the demo from lucian.co i'll mention the link in the description you can check that out so basically as you can see the cursor and all the stuff that has been pointed up right here one of the incredible or the funny thing that i really like about is the end just right here it says don't blindly follow the crowd and apparently there are some like ghost dude running now it's like yeah that's that's how it that's really like how it's been working just right here anyways the third but not the last i would say uh is one of my favorite demo is about medal of honor basically if you know medal of honor is basically like very old game and to really just kind of do a trailer about trailer teaser about it so the oculus the child company of meta or the previously known as facebook had made this demo as you can see this camera move and all this stuff it's pretty pretty good like i would say it's been like doing all this stuff and you can do a lot of cool stuff with 3js so this is the one theory so it's been my mind just kind of like blows away right you know 20 years browsers were only meant to display like text images and a little bit of css possibly but now we are doing like 3d rendering like a little bit basics of ml ai stuff like you know a little bit about say i'll not say no one really deploys production on the browser and the ml workload on browser right there but yeah there are scripts if you want to do that especially so this is what it is again uh 
here's the i would say if you want to check the uh, all the portfolios all the amazing portfolios in uh, 3js uh, so 3js on their website or the documentation page they have list all sort of like cool uh, like you know amazing creative crafty project that you can try to see it up right here so and they are definitely best of the best i would say two idea for this video actually i've got from real life lore video so real life lore is a channel where they actually create uh, videos on like geopolitics and all kind of stuff up right there so as you can see from this title like you know why no one can stop north korea why you know why, why this attack why one country is invading another how is the strategy basically uh, like real life lore ex tries to explain all the geopolitics stuff by using the map animation by geolayers 3 which is a plugin which can be used in after effects i'll just show you right there so this is the idea and i previously shown in the first like previous thing that i got the idea it was about like in june uh june or july in 2022 i got the idea that hey either i can just go on to research my physics to make my videos or i can just try to really make this project alive so uh, I chose to make this project instead of first going for the video because you know it's just like you know this project is kind of like one time investment uh, once it's been made there's only like few minor tweaks and changes that needs to be done to you know maintain it properly so that's what my idea that's what I have done and I've just told like previous analogy why this project was made for the normal people and also to attract the great talents up right here hopefully that really happens in the future uh, Again, I would like to give a brief shout out to like Bruno Simmons for this 3JS journey course. Uh, usually what really happens in open source is like, you know, there are really great, really great material or great technology that emerge out of it. But no one is actually there to kind of teach it to the broader audience. And Bruno Simmons is the one, you know, I would say the first kind of person in 3JS world who really just took, who learned everything personally and just shared it among all the people up right there. And he's the one that really made 3JS really blew or like blew up in the sky and made it popular to amongst every creative front end developer, I would say. So, a lot of people have done a lot of cool stuff with it, especially. And all thanks to Bruno Simmons for his 3JS course. Although, this, although Bruno Simmons is not paying me anything to really see this thing, this is just my genuine appreciation for him to really just bring it out right there. Again, uh, if you want to learn 3JS, if, even if you don't know anything, if you, all you have known about is basic variables, function if and loops in JavaScript, if you want to learn about 3D, his course is actually kind of, I would say, really good for it right there. So again, uh, when I finished this course, I happened to really land on this tutorial, uh, which actually says, how can you actually make a, let's say, Google Earth something like, you know, by using open layers as a canvas, and using that canvas as a texture on the 3JS pair up right here. So this was really working and the demo which the author really shown in this blog did work actually eventually when I was the first time that I saw but right now it's seemingly it's not really working for some weird reason but anyways the problem with this thing was like you know the author only just kind of shown the demo in a very like sophisticated manner like only just to few zooms where it, there was not any much GPU load. But as I'll go along with it, I'll just show you that how this method is very terrible, like it's, it's horrible. Instead, I would have probably used CZM.js. But uh, anyways, that's something I would like to cover as we go along right there. So again, this is pretty much the page of official uh, data for NASA's black map. And here is what you can get all the kind of data that is there. So at this point of time, I was really confused, like how to really begin, like, you know, I've heard something about, um, I think I just wanted to, I've something heard about map tiles, but like, you know, something was not really clicking inside of my mind. But then again, uh, to give you a fair bit of warning, my understanding about GIS is a bit shaky now, because right now, why I'm talking about GIS is because right now we are going to talk a little bit about GIS stuff, which is precursor to getting understanding about how we are going to work in the later stages of right for this process so previously i had only worked with arcgis and the only gis software that i've known is like geolayers 3 so basically like apparently geolayers i just want to show you right i just want to show you right here so again as you can see this is basically a plugin for uh, after effects where it allows you to like 
give you a map animation video format basically it fetch all the tiles from like respective services or you can host your own server you can do a lot of stuff with it especially like here and this is a very premium plugin it's like you know 329 dollars it's very expensive but anyway so coming back to the point uh, uh here's what it is manhattan you can try to color it you can try to do a lot of cool stuff with it and apparently like you know uh shawnee harris like you know just let me just show you shawnee harris maps has also made a to like brief tutorial about it like how do i make my maps here he shows you like basic stuff about how it does and then again here's the basic uh what i would say this is the uh like geolist 3 version this is the most advanced and most sophisticated way uh do check it out if you're really interested about it by the way and now it's time to move on to the next topic or the next for the slides so now that i'm here now each of this tile like there are almost eight images so first of all i knew what the map tiles were because i have really worked with like uh, uh, i would say open layers like, sorry geo layers 3 and, and the geo layers 3 essentially work on by fetching all the map tiles rendering it into the 3d canvas so that you can uh, tilt pivot swivel, swivel or whatever things that you can do with it especially like here so i didn't knew like how to create a map tiles because i know i want to create it now what is map tiles right there especially right here so to really give you an idea about what map tile is first of all i need to talk about the resolution about it right here so each one of them are supposedly 21,000 by 21,000 pixels which is like huge and if you combine all of them together so let's say that comes around by 86,000 by 43,000 pixels which is like 86k image it's like 3.7 gigapixel that's just immense immense of data that's, that, that's what this 500 meter zoom level really actually means like you know you're actually hovering on how the earth really looks uh, 500 meters above the land area that's how the clarity is right there which is what you which is what we have also experienced during our initial demo right here when we try to zoom in during the pune mumbai or during the Africa, like argentina right there so to really give you perspective about how big this 80k is let's take this as 1k and now again this is 4k four times the resolution not bad again here's the 8k still pretty comprehensible again 16k now the 1080p is trying to just going down and down and down but wait for it this is the 80k and that's just look at where the a where the 1080p is you can't even see it properly like that's how huge the data is and now when you're trying to render that data into any browser or any any browser into any pc even if it's m1 mac or m2 mac something like that that browser will simply crash it will just simply not render this kind of data and there's some like hard limit in jpeg that you can't just scale you can't just make it huge you can't just make that image that big of size there's some limit up right here but i'll just talk about it as we go along with it right here so again uh to really give you about how to solve this problem like you know how do we display uh this huge 86k images up right here first of all we have to create map tiles now what map tiles is consider this as like our base uh, 86k image what we do is we just slice it up together into various chunks you know they were let's say we will slice it up to right how many pieces that we want to slice up right there for various zoom levels we'll slice about various uh stuff right there to various resolution various stuff we do a lot of post processing up right here so again let's see let's assume that these are the like the these are the slices that we have done right here and again right now we are in pune so these are the four tiles which pretty much represent the entire pune right here and rest you blur everything and now what you do is if you want to just work on pune just zoom your camera into the pune rest blur everything because right now if you're in pune you don't need anything you don't need delhi you did you don't need mumbai you don't need anything so by fetching only the only the images or the mosaic tiles of from pune that really saves a tremendous amount of bandwidth and it's i would say the more smarter way to work with it work with these kinds of things and these are the like probably the aspect of GIS or geographical information system 
please correct me if I'm saying anything wrong, right? If my acronym is wrong. Again, uh, to really give you a perspective, let's say this is our 80K image. So what we'll do is we will just divide it by four. Again, we'll just divide it by again with 16 areas. So we'll just go along with all kind of thing till the uh, till the data starts to get more pixelated. And for this project, they, it has been divided up to like 10 layers. So to give you again, to give you a perspective, this is what the map really basically looks like. Here is our like 256 by 256 image. Then there is like, you know, uh, again, there's like 512 by 512. Again, it subsequently grows to like, you know, 1024. And again, this is like to the end number. So my project actually contain like uh, 10, I would say 10 layers. That's a bit of overkill, I would say, but you know, there's a bit of fun to always see the area. So see, the, to see, there's always fun to just kind of zoom till the map get pixelated, you know? And I, and I wanted to keep that shot alive for everyone out right there. So that's how we are right here. So that's just uh, how the map tiles actually work. Now, my first challenge was really like, you know, how do we stitch all kind of thing together? Because previously what you saw there was like eight, eight images which we need to stick together. Now, I was trying to use Photoshop to stick all together because I didn't know like how to use the uh, all of these like uh, GI software, which is specifically been used for this kind of thing right there so i was trying to like merge together trying together but there was like hard limit in photoshop you know this image was so huge that even photoshop cannot be handled properly so uh i i just happened to saw that you know there's like a hard limit about uh like jpeg that you cannot cannot basically go more than four gigabytes sites something like that uh there's also like png cannot scale because photoshop refuses straight away I tried to use Pitigui Pro, which is something like, you know, and the software that has been used in, uh, like, you know, like astrophotographer used to try to just make merge all the collage together right there. Just like, you know, how do we use like panorama stitching in uh, light, Photoshop Lightroom right there, sorry, uh, Adobe Lightroom right there. So I tried to, you know, I, try, I was trying to use it, my entire 300 gigabyte of SSD in C drive was filling up. Luckily, I had a, uh, let's say $400 credit of AWS then I what I did was extremely outlandish so as you can see this image is basically what tells us uh here's where I've tried to book an EC2 instance C5X large where a 40 core Xeon chip uh, and like SSD and all this stuff because just for using Photoshop it's outlandish but hey when you have $400 free credits you know it's you this there's, there's no reason why not to use it right so I was trying to use it and like Photoshop was entirely filling out like, you know, one terabyte and two terabytes of SOP data. That's how heavy it was processing. But still like for some reason, the JPEG was not really working. It somehow managed to really merge all them together in like TIFF format. Uh, but that was not very like, you know, uh, not very cumbersome, I would say. So again, what was the solution then? so i found out while really searching for like you know xyz tiles and all this stuff i happened to found out this second tutorial like you know generating xyz tiles in qgis that is where i got introduction about Q qgis as this software and like there's a jidal which really uses all like you know it's a very i would say uh it's a very underlying tool that every software uses like arcgis pro and all the stuff but again uh here's what it is so again uh, i was trying to know how to really merge all this sort of thing together so what i was trying to do is you know i was trying to merge it together and what I, what i found out is like hey qj is somewhat least smart enough to figure out you know attach it together because in photoshop i had to manually stitch them together and try to do it right there but later i found out but later i found out like these images were like geotiffed they were not normal tiff what geotiff really means is that there's like geographical information from which degree this image starts from where it ends so it really helps to align that image together so as you can see this also really tries to get zoom over here uh there's also like a bunch of fabulous thing that you can do up right here so now that we were left is to create the uh map tiles so again there are various standards up right here so to really just kind of uh, think about it so eventually when i was starting about when i was starting in uh, qgs there was some small bracket corner like what is the extent that you want to select 
and I thought like what is the even extent basically like there is type of projection there are various type of projects that you want to see up right here so this th there are basically two kind of projection that you want to really remember like this this is square three eight five seven and the second one is basically like you know four three two six basically it's two is to one like more get the projection what we have studied in our school and colleges that's how it is but the problem with you know with the gis world is like i feel like there's just too many standards and if there are and if there are too many standards there is essentially no standard at all and that kind of makes things difficult to work with even if your data is valid like you know in software like jdal or let's say qgis even if your data is valid it may not process the data so you have to convert that data into some other format and then only it will start to work so there are like you know uh, like google it's google has it creates like you know uh 90913 it's basically like you know if you flipped it out it's spelled like google something like that uh please uh, correct me if i'm my number is my number is scheme is wrong or anything like that and each other country has its own epsg standard and format it's just like it's, it's utter chaos i would say and with a and with particular aspect to gis i would say that there needs to be that there is scope of better tooling better development that needs to be poured into this kind of field up right here GIS is a very beautiful field. I would say if anyone is highly interested in maps to do it, there's all sort of industries that's been dedicated to it. Although GIS doesn't really speak as loud as other kind of uh, tech community like you know server, DevOps, front end, back end, and all stuff. But I found out it's very it's very intriguing if you are really highly passionate about maps and all the kind of stuff with it. But again, uh this what my point really highlights is about this is the johnny harris video where it kind of shows like why there's there are so many versions of map and why it's like you know what i just previously highlighted about when there are two kind of very there are two kind of standards there is this no standard at all and this video is perfectly demonstrate about why that problem is or why that uh, kind of appearance is basically when you are really projecting an earth on a piece of paper it is bound to be flawed you are not seeing the earth like as it is so that can kind of causes like various types of problem because normally what we use is like you know mercator maps because it kind of really maintains the 90 degree angles and all the stuff like uh marine time uses the different kinds of map uh, like aviation industry uses different kinds of maps so again uh like depending upon in what field are you working the maps would be very different so that's kind of this thing uh, tried, or the johnny harris tries to explain it right there so right now we have just created a right there map but initially when i tried to first render it out you know uh the problem was my i had created this map but this is you know in the middle of atlantic ocean so what is the problem so you know i was scratching my head i was trying to just kind of see what was the problem what is the solution but later what i really found out was that this was an extent which was in originated in pixel values so normally any map has an extent that that really ranges from like you know 180 degree positive to minus 180 degree like 90 plus and below 90. the center one is zero absolute zero and that's how it really works basically right here 360 degree divided by half year and half year like you know half year right here half year basically it's, it's 180 and it's, it's kind of stuff right there so as you can see my uh the data was in pixel value so normally it was like jdal or the qgs was figuring out its own logic to kind of place all the map together so that was like initial challenge to get it out but luckily like you know uh they do that from like you know geospark pune which is under ola uh, which is a subsidiary of Ola had really suggested me to do some to use something like you know uh, the world file. Basically, it contains the all the extent formula and uh, QGIS automatic data set. That really worked well, but there was like some of the 0.05% margin error, which was like shifting here and there. So, and the scale of like 80k image, that 0.5% is just huge. So, I was not wanting to compromise on it. But fortunately, then the image that I got from NASA was geotiffed so later what i just what i just did was like i just you i tried to merge them Gerald just straight away refused because the, those images were huge so what i did was i created a raster tile so let's me just kind of show you what that raster tile really looks like so again let's see this is a basic image that i've really created up right here 
so what that okay let's these are really missing just right here anyways uh this is the my map okay so naturally what i did was like you know this is the virtual raster tile what that virtual raster tile is basically i like to show you so basically instead of importing all those actually eight images which is like quite heavy qgs makes an indexes about all those styles and just remember what is the extent of it so if i want to show you right there let me just open this uh let me just show you this is the map which let me just delete everything right here so that uh that can be much more helpful to understand what's going on uh, apparently it has been freezed okay so again let me just bring this right here this is the nasa black marble this is 2016 and again this is what it is right so if i want to just merge all them together what i can do is i can just import one by one then yeah this is a2 right here's what it is so again this is the one of the first aspect that you can do but eventually these images are so heavy that even qgs can't process it so there is a second way that you can try to just merge them together so what you can do is what you can do is you can just search for build this is like you know build virtual raster so if i just bring this up right here what it does it it just takes the indexes it just knows where it is and just stores up right here so if i try to show you how that really looks like you know let me just open this with you know notepad that would give me an first ever right here so as you can see these are the first right here so as you can see this is a1 this is a2 it gives me all sort of things and for some really weird reason like you know qgs prefer this method is because it's more light and by using this method what you can do is you can just come right here to to this thing and then now what you can do is you can just bring this all this 86k by 4 43 000 pixel images this is uncompressed version so the compressed version is really somewhat around like 900 but like you know it doesn't make that much difference on my pc like you know uh an uncompressed file are more easy to work with so i have just kept it that way but anyways uh this the whole huge image is about two gigabytes uncompressed if you want to compress it because G qjs also gives an option to really compress it down uh i hope that's that was like a fruitful information i hope that's kind of a bit geeky uh but like I hope that's that's one more fruitful right here. And again, uh, to really give you an idea about how to do this thing, let's say if I do this tiles, let's say D-I-L-E-S tiles, it's really like here. Uh, if I just close everything together, yeah, we just want to delete this together. And again, uh, just I want to open this for some weird reason. Why I don't know why I just close it up. Uh, let me just go right here. NASA, it's like here. This is. 2016 QRF tiles this is the mod right now i want to bring this up together right here so as you can see it really knows where all the context is and now for weird reason it's very easy to work with this kind of format so it's, it's taking some time and the screen recording it makes it more slow right there uh again right here so if you come just try to give it just close my obs anyways uh uh i hope like you know this is the, our india it's pretty much it so as you can see if you want to make if you want to just divide all this into smaller chunks what you can do is you can you try to use this like you know xyz tiles gdal like you know gdal two tiles this is the format it's, there's all sort of tutorial that would really help you to understand how to really make it up right there so that's the basic uh, stuff that's been there i don't want to save this okay so now let's move on to the next slide so there's one difference between like you know i would also like to want to call known as the tmx or xyz tiles for those gis geek or info basically you know when we are creating the map tiles or small individual chunks or small individual images basically like tms style the y-axis is kind of get inverted and for some weird reason first of all jidal actually created tms styles with the y-axis inverted and i plugged that data into like in my geolayers 3 
uh, for some weird reason, you know, the Mumbai was down, Bangalore was up, like, you know, Jaipur was up, like, uh, Delhi was down for some weird reason. But later I figured out, you know, this, what's the difference between uh, TMS and XYZ tiles is basically like, again, this is a bit about, you know, uh, GIS stuff. If you're not really inclined to GIS, uh, this is not very much more important for you right there. Uh, so again, this is when I really resolved all the kind of issues, this is what the result was right there. So it took me like five or six days to actually figure out like how to properly render it, how to do it. And the good thing about Jidal is basically like, you know, when the tiles are being created, it automatically gives you a script uh, to script with like leaflet to all the kind of things. And naturally I selected open layers because there you don't have these kinds of like, you know, grid and all the stuff right there, as you can see with the leaflet leaflet uses dom to move all the stuff together so and the open list uses canvas so i would assume that uh it's like uh open layers might be drawing all the pixels together on the canvas which makes things more intuitive and interactive to work with these are the different approaches that you can have but again hey this is what it is right now so but weirdly uh, as you can see this is where the things get much more interesting India is a very huge landmass, but like here's the light, bright spot that we actually live right here. So obviously for logistics purpose and where we have created the cities, here's basically like the living pattern of all the human civilization in India really is. So and we can't uh, we can't use all kind of we can't use entirely hundred percent of India's land area because for like you know there are uh, environment forest zones and like. For logistic reason that which i previously mentioned right there but anyways coming back to the point so we have to really upload all these images so the challenge was like you know figuring out how to really make all these images took me like you know five days but then when i realized i created these images i started to count one by one and i found out that just by i like to show you this right here so it's like here just uh just at this 2016 had 14 lakh images which is like huge for 0 to like 10 and similarly for was this right here so eventually i had like 28 lakh images and uploading them one by one to like any server is a huge challenge unless it really allows you to like zip all the thing and together because what how the traditional file really works is you take the thing you load it and you send it you take the thing load it and send it now imagine doing this for like you know 28 lakh times that's how slow is that and uh, fortunately like you know uh, i happen to get some tricks and tips to really know about it. i'll just share right there so as as you can see i have chosen like r2 for this kind of demo up right there now you might ask why r2 why not s3 the best part about r2 is it doesn't have any bandwidth cost now one of my major issues with s3 is like you know they have the ridiculous like expensive uh you know egress fees and for some weird reason you know they constantly make their pricing model much more complicated which is just purely nonsensical i would say till uh, october or november like 2022 there was like 5 gb of free tier you know i was not getting charged anything of that but later words they added like you know time storage time storage you know the even though your uh, even though your data is in free tier you have to pay for time that's you have to pay for the uh you have to pay for the money that the um, let's say you have to pay for the amount basically how much your data lives on s3 so if it lives on one hour you have to pay for it and so far like you know just for like one or 1 1.5 gb data uh aws charges me around 20 rupees which is not huge for me as of right now but if you scale that to like terabytes of data that's this you know I, that you can see the math you can just try to work the math on it and that's what i hate about aws thing like you know it's sort of it's, it's try to say that but hey we are customer focused we're relentless and your action doesn't speak that that way right there uh and luckily you know i happened to stumble upon r2 which was just recently launched initially there were a lot of challenges you know when i was trying to upload with cyberduck it failed but like now it's been working absolutely flawlessly right there and i and i can say that now i'm using r2 in production that's how it's good right there plus you get the benefit about you know there's like free tier about 10 million read requests 
as compared to uh, like you know uh, AWS where it's about only a 1 million free rig requests and then you have to charge pay for it and the pricing about like you know is about pricing about R2 is also cheaper than uh, S3 about there so that's the plus point about uh, Cloudflare R2 is it's, it's just way superior it just deploys everything on edge that's also the main point key point with with respect to S3 you are being constrained by a particular region right there and plus you have to pay extra for CloudFront and the setting up that is another headache itself so Cloudflare just eliminates all that kind of uh, tension for I would kind of eliminates all that headache for us you just give the data and they just strategize to deploy in, across the various data center effectively and so far what I've tested is like you know all the all the responses under within 50 to 100 milliseconds so far and that's really I would say good response rate coming back to the point here's uh, what we have to do now as I might say that I've chose like cyber duck for this thing because it was uh, the only I would say a lot of people were using it this is free this is like I will say the good one right there although uh, cyber duck has its own little bit of issues but I would say uh, but in a I would say you would experience that issues in only in extreme cases let's say uh, if you are really uploading it tons of tons of data let's say and only if one so in my case what I was doing like you know I was giving it a lot of like all sort of 14 I would say 14 lakh images or 1.4 million images and suddenly if only one images get failed it doesn't tell me like where it was failed it just tells like hey this is failed like try it again so I have to eventually try it out again but like hey if you're just uploading one one file which is of like 550 or even 500 gigabytes gigabytes of data that will eventually be i would say uh eventually be successfully uploaded with uh like say cyberduck but eventually i figured out i just i i learned to how to parallelize the workflow so what i did what i was what i eventually did was i only uploaded 50 images at one point of time 51 1 to 50 50 to 100 100 to 150 so i just parallelized all the workflow so that just reduce the amount of uploading time right there so instead of uploading take this image take it right here upload it so now there are like four or five instances working parallelly so that just speeds up right there and yeah now it's time to learn about 3d so after finishing this thing like you know my journey begin with the i want to learn about blender and this is basically like you know uh, like andrew price or the blender guru is basically like the person which made blender popular amongst millions of people out right there and this donut series is basically like you know hello world it's, it's also it's basically like equivalent to hello world in programming if you want to learn about blender if you're a completely new beginner this is the tool that you want to follow right there or you want to begin to understand how the blender really works right there so this is the this is basically the tutorial that i followed and i did create my own uh let's say blender donut right there so this is the donut as you can see it's pretty normal pretty stuff right there so afterwards i also happened to just kind of make this globe uh, because i just had happened to you know watch one of the tutorial like you know how to how can you make a globe how can you make this 3d stuff so like basically i just i was just inspired to make my own globe right here and now to really give you perspective about how this was really made you can just try to see this tutorial up right here so this is basically the tutorial that i really followed up right here uh, now uh, this is much more advanced i would say this also goes into like creating how the atmosphere shaders to give that realistic you know smooth fading effect right there but i didn't i didn't want it that so i just ignored all the things i just uh, did what i what was necessary to me to in order to create this kind of thing first of all you take the base color image anything in that case and then what you do is you just bring along another depth map so the brightest image really represents as one value the darkest one is represents as zero and this kind of helps you to create that you know depth illusion of right here so this is basically how it really looks right here uh, as you can see it's you know the the resolution of map is pretty lower because it's like you know it's just uh, one zero to four pixel that was all the height and depth are kind of get pixelated but the more data that you add let's say it's 10k 15k and all this stuff 
it will get more refined but obviously you have to kind of manage the resolution because otherwise the processing would get much more harder so i would say 10 to 20k is your sweet spot to give you that you know realistic effect and which is exactly what i did right you know i created my own uh, let's say 3js spear and i try to attach my own let's say right here so uh, I create. I try to attach my own open layer style to it as a canvas layer. Now, as you as you might have saw right here, this just looks very horrible. Like it's it's very horrible. It's pretty washed out. And the reason is because it probably uses a very low res in resolution up right here. But there was a fundamental challenge to it. And what the challenge was basically like you know, if I try to scale it, you know, try to zoom it up beyond like four or five levels. It's basically like you know up to like one let's say i would say two or five kilometer above the ground level it tries to you know download all sort of images together like you know 400 500 until the time your gpu memory is completely full and it will just simply not render it it's that's the problem in right here so and as you can see the loading time was huge so i have to figure out another way to just kind of get through all these problems so you know what i just happen to just kind of go through it so i tried to use the static images you know base layer and top of it but as you can see this is where the top images get rendered but the base layer which was like plain two is to one base canvas layer that was not really rendered properly and the problem with what problem with my approach was open layers has its own logic 3gs has its own logic and they're basically like getting duct taped together there's no way you know both can communicate with another like how these things are working properly so it was like you know 3js was doing its own thing and like you know an open list was doing its own thing there was not any proper communication together so that was really kind of the weird thing up right here uh so eventually later i have to figure out what is the plausible solutions and later also there was one of the problem with open layers is like you know somehow it reduced the quality of the image as you can see in the like in the europe upright sorry the egypt it the uh, all this like in the in the let's say and the all right here is pretty much look washed out as compared to original image all this texture all these details are intact and by the way both images are 8k there is nothing any special like you know i've just uh, bumped out the resolution or something like that both images were 8k but still like none of them even rendered properly like open list or it was 3gs false something like that so at this point of time i was pretty confused like how to go forward and how to just render all these solutions like you know in a much more meaningful way so again uh i happened to stumble upon this project where it actually creates all the 3d tiles right there so basically if you have in your if you have a 3d model it basically breaks your a project into much more like you know piece by piece so let's try to do it i try to create this but the maintain of it maintain of this project said that hey it's a bit more complex and stuff so apparently what the complex step procedure was i didn't know so i just left it out right there another option for me was to use something like this one you know ccmjs so the closest thing to my project was this like you know uh fascia has already made a project out right there so this was actually made in ccmjs so but i was not very sure like you know whether i can import my 3d animation from blender right here uh, apparently now that i've seen from my own like, you know chat gpt selling that is possible so the next version i'll be doing that so let's talk about it in a in a more upcoming upcoming as we go along with this video right there so i tried to learn about ccmjs as you can see I wanted this kind of lazy loading, you know, this like all the 3D objects are properly geo referenced to each particular uh, property right there. But, you know, CZMJS documentation is not very, very approachable. Like, look at this, like, you know, what should I even look for? I, I don't even understand, like, what to, where to start from. But it's a basic understanding. It's like, you know, but hopefully, uh, I was talking to the chat GPT and it says like, hey, yes, you can do, yes, you can do. And this so far solution seems very plausible, like what I'm, what I was trying to do right there. But when I get, when I was starting, there's no chat GPT, there's nothing like there. Chat GPT actually released in November, and I was actually started doing that in, uh, I would say August, sorry September, October right there. It's like yeah. 
So again, uh, so naturally hard to really move with the static images right here. So basically, as you can see right here, the problem with this approach was like, you know, there was like base images right here. And I was trying to use a 2020-12 version of India and I was trying to align it together. But as you can see right here in the, let's say, Pakistan and all this stuff, the image was not getting aligned properly. Like, you know, so I have to really kind of find a solution to fix that problem. So, so what this approach was doing, what I was trying to do right here, you take a base layer, base image of 2016 version and apply on top of it just a cutout of India on, uh, let's say, 2012 version. So I was trying to stitch and align them together, but somehow weird reason it's not been aligned properly right here. I hope it was. So again, if you just uh, come right here, I had to just kind of, you know, uh, make a QGI. So I have to just kind of make a GeoJSON object, make the political borders, and then I have to just kind of import all this map into ArcGIS Pro, back it into like Photoshop, and somehow I had created this, uh, you know, this like, yeah. So this, this is what I want to highlight right here. So this is basically an 8K canvas right here. So it's really, it just goes right into 8K into by 4K. And this is where it just draws all the map right here. So basically I had this GeoJSON object of country borders and all this stuff where it's like, it's, uh, it has its own extent. It knows it, how to list snap of the map. Uh, on GeoLayers or any GIS application right there. So I take the, I took the base image, slapped the right here. I just rendered all the green pixels value. Again, imported that into Photoshop. And then again, just, you know, try to uh, use the, like, you know, I tried to mark the selection by using magic wand tool. And then again, create it right here. So uh, I hope that's clear, I would say. But anyways, if you're getting confused, I would like to show you this one scenario. So yeah, this is basically all the my uh, like you know, PSB file is right here. So if you if you just kind of zoom right here, what you can essentially see is this is Afghanistan that has been mapped right here. Let's say this if I just disable this. So eventually, how to do this? It's like if you just select this, uh, if you come right here. Let's say you know magic wand tool. And what you have to do is basically like you know go right here do the selection like this is the basic let's say map okay sorry this is the background version select this and here's how we can select here's how we can select this and now what you can do is you can try to do this as edit you can try to stroke it right here so again here's what the stroke color is you can try to do all sort of thing let's say red and all the color is let's say you know Okay, you have bring me this right here. You can try to do all sort of thing. Blue. Okay. This is pretty much five pixels. Uh, as you can do right here. So control D to deselect. As you can see, it's the border has been selected right here. So that's how I have created this, you know, border right here. So as you can see in my own project, the there's like you know base layer of 2016, and there's on top of it, here's how here's what that basically the political boundary looks like. So I hope that really answers or it really makes it clear, much more clear. Moving on further. Now let's talk about animations. I actually wanted to create something like, you know, uh, this GitHub animations. They were, were, were essentially moving from one location to another location right there but my knowledge of blender isn't that great so you know uh, i try to find out like how to make curves in like you know bezier curves in uh, let's say blender but turns out you know making it's a curve or circle in just 2ds it's very easy you know just you just take a circle ellipse tool and just drag it out that's pretty easy but then you but when it comes to like a uh, blender there's like 3d component like you know you have to just kind of check from each uh, each perspective like x y and z perspective and for a newbie like me it's very hard to really wrap around like how does it actually works but luckily i found out this tutorial where you can just try to uh, where you can try to just kind of uh, constrain i would say uh, constrain your camera along to follow basic path so basically what you can do is you can now animate that circle according to what you want and basically what you do is 
you take this and that's how what you get so as you can see on the left side this is what the camera animation looks like on the right side here's what the camera sees in the center of it and that's what the site actually sells you this animation is what most sorry the texture size the clarity and this animation is what i wanted to sell you on the site right there it's right here and it's pretty cool like you know it's look it has its i wanted to kind of make it look of satellite image uh you know satellite is moving along this path but apparently it has its own you know uh satellite plus fpv drone which is kind of cool thing to they do right there uh again talking about texture sizes this is the area which i have to struggle a lot more because you know there were a lot of there was i had to really pick up like you know a lot of kind of do a lot of permutations and trial combination like you know choose a 4k image 6k image 8k image 10k 15k 16k but i also have to manage the gpu size because you know our gpu is the hard limit is around like 8 8, 8 gigabytes because uh chrome allows you to like kind of have its own gpu memory and you can't you cannot exceed that uh and so far my project is kind of like you know gpu intensive so that's the problem you know because i'm using 16k image right now a basis texture right here uh basis what is now you might question what is basis texture we'll talk about it later as we'll go along with it right here so eventually i have to kind of experiment with all kind of thing even though i have chosen like 4k it was like pretty washed out 8k didn't work finally like somewhat like you know 10k started to look right correctly but it was not in the power of two basically in the world of 3d it's you know in terms of computer computer always works in the binary data so if you don't provide you know if you don't provide your textures into binary resolution 3js will automatically try to format that into like near uh, squared area right there so you know sometime most of the time it will work fine but to really give you the best optimum performance your resolutions the texture resolution should be always in the power of like two it's like two is to something like you know uh 5112 1024 2048 and then so and so forth right there and and when it comes to like 3d world it doesn't matter how your file size is it matters how your how big your texture is because texture texture resolutions are always on textures are basically stored uncompressed on gpu so you have to do a clever management on how to do that so that's always a plus i would say that's always a thing to always keep in your mind Again, design choices. Uh, this is what I have to want to talk about. So again, if I go to these, uh, if I go to this, my own website, I just want to show you right here. So again, uh, it's like here. Yeah, this is the thing. Okay, yeah. So again, this is the thing. So this is the Syria. Let's let me just come right here. So you know, there are only so this design choices or the map animation were pretty much inspired from you know uh like real life load video because there are majorly four con 14 countries so if you have if you see this video all these countries order are pretty much exactly like what he has described starting from afghanistan iceland uh it's like yeah so i've just cut copied it i didn't have tried to anything done something new out of it it's like yeah so i just found to do that very convenient and that just have been working flawless light here so you know as usually we want to highlight which country we are focusing on and first of all i was thinking like you know i was trying to introduce just right here a basic like country uh, let's say country flag but you know that is not very i would say a very cool feature like everyone knows the country and it's uh, it's i would say it's more appropriate or more fashionable to introduce something like cultural or something of like you know natural feature of this country right here so far in india is about you know cultural diversity so this this lady doing bharat natyam and it's all the stuff right there in china you all know the china is basically famous for a great wall of china uh for let's say it's right right here uh africa is famous for its wildlife right here it's basically like if you come to even australia let me just come right here pakistan is like you know uh pakistan has like you know uh, it's really like it's Pakistan has its own symbiotic, as uh, you say, scenery beauty and all this stuff. But I have chosen this as like Mohan Jodaro uh, because it's it's very like you know primary source for this Indus civilization and all this stuff. Here's where 
it has been settled right there uh, egypt is famous for its pyramid again it's cultural us is the land of capitalism that's it's the capitalism of the free country that's what it represents and again uh, australia land of kangaroos it's straight really like here's what it is it's also a big wildlife area so that's what i wanted to kind of highlight and also uh since you know uh there was also the problem like you know there was not any scroll bar i have to kind of add my own as you can see it's just right here it's fake right here so that just right here and uh just to give you a brief overview of right there if you just kind of right here or uh, if i try to refresh it now some people have already told me that you know uh this introduction animation is just too fast and i kind of agree with them because that animation is actually inspired by you know uh it's actually it's inspired from like you know watch tower of turkey so this is how it basically looks like so yeah this is what i was talking about uh yeah this is you know it's going everything is fast you know it's kind of like you know it's your mind is going like wow what is happening like you know but it's creating that effect when you have watched it enough you have watched it but you have not watched it enough that you know what it is so your mind always tends to you know wants it to watch it again so it's kind of create that own you know seductious effect you know i would say is just working on the psychology to uh, trigger your user to really kind of reload the website so i hope i'm not really trying to hack or cheat any people but you know that's kind of says this cool look right here everything's moving fast i want to see it again so it kind of triggers that look right there uh again to really just kind of give you this texture again uh this is the let's say uh what i was trying to do right there with the feature images which you have previously saw right there as you can see to really blend it properly like into text i've just kind of really reduced this opacity just right here from the top it doesn't really matter you know it's starting right there but i want to eventually fade it with the bottom if i didn't do that the there was like harsh lining right you know it doesn't look as clean as together so this really looks together this looks i would say good enough so on top if like there's a seam line on that and down it gets blended together so again uh yeah this is where i created all those you know map slides coming one by one here's where all these slides are being rendered properly as one by one right there so it's coming one it's coming two down like, you know this right there it's all sort of right there so i selected one i just maximize the screen and uh by going on to the inspect tab just deleted everything screenshot it and just repeated process by seven times so it's i know it's a bit cumbersome but like hey it's a final result is kind of like looking good i would say that's how it is so the next is about basis texture now remember what i've previously told you in jeep in the world of 3d you have to especially take care about all this like you know how big your resolution is because the uh all the file size all the textures are stored uncompressed on your uh, on your gpu memory so that kind of even if your uh, texture is about 4k it will be it might be consuming like 100 or 200 mb space in your gpu memory itself and that's where the format like you know basis texture comes into play uh, again i would like to show you a demo about it so this is the pv rest tool this is basically a i would say image view editor like for the basis texture format or ktx2 because you cannot open that uh, basis texture into the any image right there so you need some specialized tools right there so let's say i uh, want to open this image okay this is there are lots of images right here let's see open this 2016 okay ktx2 which is also the format or the family of images into basis texture format right there so again i'll uh, just take it's taking some time i hope it gets loaded fast yeah it's got reloaded reloaded so again here's where it's really right there the best part about it is you know as you can see it's been taking giving me all the xyz coordinate where my cursor is going giving me all these texture values so right now there are all sort of like map map level basically it's just acting like map tiles so if i go to zero it's like highest clarity if i go to like level three and just try to zoom in yeah so as you can see it's pretty washed out as what we have saw in the video slide right there uh it's like yeah so if you're going to come to right here seven it's pretty washed out and the best part about it is since this basis texture has this map map level or the 
you know, like the zoom or the clarity level for each individual zoom level. 3GS automatically selects what's best or best what is appropriate for it. So that kind of also helps to eliminate the GPU level. And the best part about this basis texture is it remains all these files remain compressed on a GPU memory and it just selects only the thing that that's really needed. Now for this kind of thing, it really requires a lot of crazy math for it. Uh, it's like, you know, which is not something I'm really familiar with. Although I will really, uh, I will also link that project like basis texture binomial is binomial is what the company which is working behind this project. Uh, I will link their repo down the link so you can check them out right there. Again, the next one is basically dealing with the scroll logic. Now, uh, I was trying to, you know, create a snap scroll with JavaScript. The problem with I didn't want like snap scroll native CSS snap scroll because some because, uh, I wanted the flexibility like, you know, that animation should go smooth. And apparently like CSS snap was like, you know, only going up and down with uh, there was no flexibility in CSS snap scroll. And plus, uh, I was using window.scroll to property, which is not being properly, which doesn't work properly when you have, uh, you know, when you have CSS snap scroll because it tries to hide all the web page onto the single work right there. So, so eventually I tried to really manage this, but like, you know, I was trying to manipulate the default scroll behavior, but it was simply not working. I tried to ask chat GPT, like, you know, hey, tell me like how to work with this pro problem. Uh, it gave me some weird solution that you can use the, like, you know, uh, set timeout function, but also that's also not reliable. So in the end, I have to like switch over from like, you know, scroll event to wheel event because that's more stable. But the problem of using wheel event was like, you know, it was only limited to uh, what I would say, only limited to only desktops and laptop that cannot work with, uh, you know, that cannot work on the mobile right there. So the middle ground was to use pointer events, but like, you know, at the, at the point of time when I was looking at the de dealing with this problem, uh, I didn't know about much about pointer events. So in future, I would much likely to really just kind of use that uh, event model right there. Or even if like, you know, if I can use both touch or let's like, say touch event, touch move, and the, the, like say, uh, mouse wheel event that's that's also really good right there so again this is what i was talking about like you know design and all the choices right there so again so yeah that was the problem which i so that was exactly the problem that i was kind of really having with this kind of like thing like you know the scroll logic was a bit more complicated with you know uh with the scroll event right there there was a lot of conditions like you know there was apparently like for each in each individual if condition there were there needs to be three parameters that needs to be checked and even for like you know uh for if you go to my github repo right now the scroll logic is a bit more simplified due to the mouse wheel event so what i what i've done right now is just kind of i've hide the overflow it's like yeah so i, I just hide the body to let's say i've just uh what i've done right now is to just hide the scroll bar by using you know overflow as hidden because i don't want to just kind of scroll below down there and i want to use javascript to scroll properly so right now uh you know i can use trackpad my mouse wheel and also like up and down keys to just kind of simulate the scroll behavior and so far that has been working much more properly right there so you might be really wondering like what's the what so what's then what was the response after doing all these kind of things so you know that's really there are like tons of things to be talking about but since like my camera is telling me it's been now one hour somewhat like more than 25 minutes it's like yeah but like anyways uh you know i could talk i could go on and talk endlessly but like i'm not not remembering all the details and intricate nuances if you have any question comments just please let them uh, let me know in the comment box so i can just help you out uh again to really give you perspective about, you know, this is what the, uh, the chart really looks like. Since the launch of this project, I have got received around 37 gigabytes of bandwidth, which is like insanely good, I would say, from like 3 or 4 March right there. This is from the time period right there. This is total about 8K, 8.8, it's about 9, it's right now it's on 9 to 10K track record page views. So it's like just recently I've checked it out. And this is staggeringly about, you know, 215k request had it been just aws i have been like you know char like massively just for all this thing 
it's just like yeah right there so thanks to cloudflare i have to doesn't i don't have to pay anything and the best part about all the request is all the more amount of data that people will use the more the data will be get cached so basically cloudflare uh will help me to even reduce my r2 bill to getting the request right so basically what really happens is the request gets to the cache server it checks whether all the data is there since more people are even using the service the cache is still fresh and that really helps to get this request to pass on to the r2 so that the caching also helps to reduce the request rate to the r2 and thus it kind of so what the cloud is right now telling me is around 20 to 30 percent of the data is being like stored in inside within the cache flare right there so uh yeah so 20 to 30 percent of the data is being served from the cache rest is when it's really like if you upgrade to the pro plan which i'm not so you can get to control that cache invalidity behavior so right now uh, cloudflare is using their default mechanism so it's like yeah that's pretty much how it's been working right there so this is the it's like i'm getting a lot of requests from india and most of this like you know 215 requests are only due to because of the map tiles because i knew like you know from the day one i knew that my application i want to design for something scale and aws would aws s3 would suck the life out of me i don't want to like you know maintain like it's like i don't want to have the build shocks with aws and luckily i haven't found anyone to experience the build shocks in cloudflare and cloudflare's you know pricing model is a bit more transparent bit more i would say uh they are more on subscription basis although they do have like they do charge for your usage but they are really upfront about their pricing structure and all that it doesn't it, it's not like aws where you have free tier but then again the later day you charge for like you know time storage and all the stuff it's pretty nonsense i would say but again it's like enough of my ranting uh like let me just show you the clear demo and starts up right here so it's like if you, if i just come right here uh like this is the twitter if i go to right here it's my twitter so let's see profile apparently there are there's like around 12k views it's like 308 uh 300,800 times this video has been played uh which pretty much reflects to actual original stat what has cloudflare has shown me as i've shown in the demo right there so that's pretty much how this demo is really looked right there i know this was a bit huge it's pretty pretty long video but you know this video has took me around four months to even try figure out a trial error how to do it properly one of my most pain problem was to figure out how to select a proper texture size you know that itself was around like you know one to two week procedure and figuring out how to get a scroll logic properly work that itself had took me my entire january so if i just come to right here again uh let's say this the the uh this cause of three js here is what i'm here what i've mentioned with all the let's say maintenance and all the stuff that it's like you know uh here's it's this is the showcase oh uh, yeah here's what i really tried to mention it's like you know scrolling fixing the scrolling issue was a lot of painful problem right there so that's video what i saw that it was really you know stuttering a bit like there here and there but eventually i figured out properly but like you know there are some valid concerns that these uh, people have mentioned so in future i will just work on it so so now the question is why this is in a beta why not in a public release the problem with this is like you know if i just try to open this if i just try to just kind of get through okay uh, yeah this is what it is if i try to just zoom this it's like it refresh it so this demo will just not work in mobile because the gpu memory in smartphone is even less than what the what uh desktop offers so in future i do want to use czmjs because apparently chat gpt tells me that hey this solution has been plausible you can use your glb model you can try to import your own glb animation into it plus on top of it uh you know i, I don't have to deal with the problem like what the what they thought what those blog posts actually mentioned where it was using open layers plus that glb to really animate all the stuff together so czmjs automatically handles all together but the problem which only I was reluctant to use it is the documentation is horrible. But since Chat GPT has given me some demo, I would like to show you right there. So uh I don't I'm not sure, like you know, it's if it's giving me a accurate data. Anyway, 
but you know it's it's uh, trusting trusting chat gpt is just trusting like you know whatsapp university uh, you have to take it for granted like you know what chat gpt is telling you is right or wrong like yeah but i hope what it, what this is telling is right or wrong so yeah this you can use the cgm you can use the model you can set the viewer to you know model this stuff you can try to animate this stuff right there and pretty much it's it's been right there so my upcoming version will eventually be using the cgm js so hopefully that should be able to solve all the key pain problem that you know a key pain problem as in uh, that this project will work both on let's say uh, what i would say it's both on uh, desktop and both and the other mobile side right there mobile side as well so hopefully i hope that this demo has been much more helpful i hope that uh, I mean, I don't know if there was any educational value or something that you have really got to learn or not. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, my journey. I wanted to share it out with all of you guys. So hopefully, uh, I hope you have really enjoyed all this presentation and all the demo. So if you have any question, queries, or comments, please let me know in the comment box below. I'd be happily, happily love to answer all of you guys. So with that said, stay connected, and I'll see you next time.